I now give the floor to His Excellency Ramadan Lama Mara, Minister for Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad of Algeria. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabi. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Peace be upon the Prophet, President of the General Assembly, Secretary General, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to begin by extending my sincere congratulations to His Excellency Abdullah Shahid on his election to the presidency of the 76th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations and wish him every success in his functions. I would also like to pay tribute to Mr. Falkan Boskia, your predecessor, for his excellent management of the work of the previous session and for all of the praiseworthy initiatives that were adopted under his presidency. And I also cannot fail to extend my congratulations and appreciation to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, and our support for his commitment to strengthening the role of the United Nations Organization, in particular in the areas of peace, security, sustainable development, and the protection and promotion of human rights. Mr. President, this session is being held at a time when our world is facing a number of challenges which have overshadowed all aspects of human life. There can be no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic, because of its rapid spread and its lethal nature, which has crossed all geographic borders without distinction between rich and poor countries, is today the top existential challenge. This situation confirms more than ever before the urgent need for us to strengthen international cooperation and solidarity to more effectively activate the mechanisms of multilateral action and to do that in order to together face this pandemic and establish the basis for a new global order post-COVID-19 which is based on equity and which makes it possible for there to be equal participation of all nations, of all United Nations member states without the least discrimination. The theme of this session, Building Resilience, through hope to recover from COVID-19 is the only way that will enable us to overcome this decisive phase in the history of humanity. In this framework, and despite the great challenges imposed upon us, this pandemic has also provided us with a historic opportunity to correct the errors of the past and to learn lessons in order to firmly move forward, in order to build a prosperous future for all of humanity. In order to do this, we are called upon to complete the global reform process of the United Nations Organization in order to improve its performance and strengthen its capacity to fulfill the mandates assigned to it under the charter of the organization by stressing the uh, revitalization and the essential role of the General Assembly as well as the reform of the Security Council in order to guarantee greater transparency and equitable geographic distribution representation, putting an end to the historic injustice that has been suffered by the African continent. Mr. President, 
the extraordinary and dangerous context through which the international community is living in the form of the COVID-19 pandemic must not allow us to forget the political and security crises, the hot spots of tension, as well as the development challenges that are being faced by a number of regions in the world, particularly in the Middle East and in Africa. Algeria, a pivotal country which works for peace and cooperation is following with a great deal of interest recent developments that have been taking place in brotherly countries and we reiterate our unchanged position in favor of peaceful and political solutions to conflicts and crises without any kind of foreign interference. This position has been shown to be valid and important and is consistently confirmed on the ground. In this regard, my country has undertaken a number of efforts, regionally and internationally, in order to address the root causes of these crises and conflicts and in order to restore stability by defending the values of dialogue, of negotiation and of national reconciliation. My country will continue to defend the just causes of the people who are fighting to recover their fundamental rights and legitimate, legitimate rights, including the inalienable right to self-determination, particularly in Palestine and the Western Sahara. In this regard, Algeria would like to express its profound concern at the lack of perspective uh, for a lasting and definitive solution to the Palestinian question, and we condemn the persistence of the repressive practices of the Israeli occupation against the Palestinian people. And we also express our firm condemnation of the total denial by Israel of the peace process and pertinent resolutions of the United Nations and of international law. We renew our call on the international community and particularly the Security Council to assume its historic and legal responsibilities and force the occupying power to put an end to its occupation of Palestinian territories and allow the Palestinian people to establish an independent state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Algeria also reiterates its commitment in favor of the Arab Peace Initiative aimed at establishing a solution of two states and to liberate all occupied Arab territories, including the Syrian Golan. With the same determination, Algeria reaffirms its support for the right of the Sahrawi people to self-determination, and we call upon the United Nations to assume their legal responsibilities towards the Sahrawi people and guarantee their inalienable rights. The organization of a free and fair referendum in order to enable this courageous people to determine their future and decide on their political future cannot forever be taken hostage by the intransigence of an occupying state which has failed several times with regard to its international obligations, in particular those arising, those responsibilities uh, arising f clearly from the settlement plan drawn up by the United Nations organization in partnership with the Organization of African Unity as well as those arising from all of the pertinent resolutions of the Security Council and of the General Assembly. International law and legality on this issue have been expressed through resolutions of the Security Council, but also through the advisory opinion handed down by the International Court of Justice four decades ago demonstrating the genuine nature of the conflict in the Western Sahara, namely that it is an issue of decolonization which cannot find solution unless we apply the principle of self-determination.
and it's on the basis of that same principle that Algeria, a neighboring country and an observer of the political process, is working to remain a source of peace, security and stability for our neighbors. We believe that the right of the Sahrawi people to self-determination is inalienable, non-negotiable, and is not subject to statutory limitations. Moreover, Algeria supports the decision of the Peace and Security Council of the African Union to begin direct negotiations between the Kingdom of Morocco and the Democratic Sahrawi Arab Republic two countries of the African Union. And this implies duties and responsibilities with regard to the uh, principles and responsibilities of the African Union. Mr. President, under the leadership of the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboun, because of our history and because of our place, that the place that we occupy in the Arab, African, and Mediterranean world, Algeria remains faithful to the values and ideals of the non-aligned movement, and we remain attached to the goals and principles of the United Nations Charter. And through all of our efforts, we attempt to establish the logic of dialogue as the basis for resolving crises and conflicts. We continue to be opposed to unilateral coercive measures imposed on developing countries as a way to exert political and economic pressure outside the norms of international law. The Algerian approach to resolving differences and conflicts has been demonstrated in particular in Libya when we provided our support to the national dialogue process between our Libyan brothers under the auspices of the United Nations. We breathe new life and continue to do so uh, into the mechanism of the country's uh, neighboring Libya and at the last ministerial meeting held in Al Algiers we aim to contribute to the stability in the country and this to be achieved by the holding of general elections in accordance with the roadmap arising from the process of Libyan political dialogue. In order to preserve security uh, in Libya as well as that of neighboring countries directly affected by everything happening in this brotherly neighbor country. Algeria is prepared to continue these efforts and provide our support to our Libyan brothers and to share with them our experience in the area of national reconciliation and the peaceful settlement of disputes. We therefore will support our Libyan brothers so that they can benefit from our experience. And this is the commitment that on many occasions has been expressed by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun. With regard to the situation in Mali, Algeria is con determined to continue with its role at the head of the Committee for the Agreement for Peace and Reconciliation arising from the Algiers process. This is a central role, and we welcome the progress that has been recorded in this area, despite the great challenges and difficulties brought about by the expansion of the terrorist presence, which threatens the security and the stability of the country. And indeed of the entire Sahel region and all neighboring countries. Algeria renews its 
commitment to work hand in hand with our Malian brothers to achieve the goals and principles of the Algiers Agreement and we look forward to the holding of presidential elections and the achievement of the goals for the transition period. In this regard, we reiterate our call upon the international community to provide its support to Malians and contribute to the success of this process, particularly by honouring the commitments made in the area of economic and social development. The situation in these two countries directly affects the unstable situation being experienced in the Sahara Sahel region and that because of the worsening of the terrorist threat and other related threats. In the light of this situation the President of the Republic, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboun, in his quality as coordinator of the fight against terrorism and violent extremism in Africa, has put forward practical proposals to the Presidency of the African Union aimed at breathing new life into the institutions and strengthening the mechanisms available to the African Union in order to fight this cross-border and dangerous phenomenon, namely the phenomenon of terrorism. And as part of our action working for peace, Algeria is working to put an end to various disputes and to promote strategic partnerships between the African Union and the Arab world, whilst at all times preserving African unity and rejecting any factor that may harm it or negatively affect it. This unity in the ranks remains an essential condition for achieving the strategic goals which the countries and peoples of the continent aspire to as we work towards the 2063 Agenda. And on the basis of this conviction, Algeria has responded favourably to the request of our brothers in Ethiopia, Egypt and the Sudan in order to provide a contribution to ensure a favourable political climate which will make it possible for these countries, these brotherly countries, to overcome their differences and assert the spirit of cooperation and common interest. That is our contribution in the area of African mediation. Mr. President, since the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, Algeria has made significant progress in achieving them. Indeed, we rank amongst the top countries uh, in the African and Arab region. That was in 2019. In the classification of the Sustainable Development Index, which is a very important index with regard to the implementation of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Algeria remains concerned at the worsening of problems created by various environmental crises, particularly the phenomenon of desertification, which has been affecting my country for several decades now. The continued worsening of climate disasters such as floods, droughts, scarce rainfall and the econo negative economic and social consequences arising from this as well as other damage caused by climate change and the alarming decline of biodiversity. Despite our limited capacity, Algeria has spared no effort to take up the challenges posed by these phenomena. environmental 
issues today have become an important part of the policies of the state at various levels and in various sectors. Moreover, my country is firmly pursuing the process of building democracy in the new Algeria with the establishment of the rule of law and social justice at its heart and particularly through an amendment to the Constitution, the holding of legislative elections and the preparations underway for upcoming local elections. The process of democratic change has been outlined by the uh, plan published by the government a few days ago and this contains five main areas namely the strengthening of the rule of law and the establishment of good governance the modernization of justice the promotion of freedom dialogue consultation and the establishment of a free civil society free and responsible as well as the freedom of assembly, peaceful demonstration, and of the press, and the fight against corruption, the modernization of the administration, and the civil service. All of these political reforms translate the will of the Algerian people and the Algerian state to strengthen human rights in the broadest possible way throughout our country. In the area of the economy, the government continues to work to strengthen the economic recovery, to modernize the banking and financial system, to reform the public commercial sector and the governance of public institutions, as well as in to improve the attractiveness of the investment climate and the framework for development of companies and entrepreneurship. Mr. President, the existential test posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and imposed on humanity has demonstrated our common destiny. The international community must therefore be aware of the need to work hand in hand in order to guarantee a better future for everyone. And that is why Humanity today has a precious opportunity, not necessarily to change the past, but to ensure that we seize this promise for a new way forward, a new departure towards a new era in which all human beings will be free of fear and free of need where all people will be able to live a dignified life. I thank you for your kind attention. May the peace of God be upon you all. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad of Algeria for his statement.